The 2021 portion of the season wraps up Saturday as UVA Wives goes on the road to Salisbury and takes on the number 11. Catawba Indians are number 11 in the D2 side of poll, number 22 in the women's basketball coaches poll. Uh, Coach Gluzman uh, coming off a road loss down at Lincoln Memorial, uh, a game back and forth, uh, 72 67 is how it goes out. We'll start there. Um, really foul trouble, limited bench. Um, you always want to come out with a win, but uh, your team makes 10 three-pointers in that game of season high. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of positives to take from that game. Like you said, uh, foul trouble definitely played a part in it. I had my top three scores on the bench for most of the second quarter. Um, but I felt like the kids that we brought in really stepped up. They filled their role, uh, you know, kept us, you know, within a one, two possession game the whole time. Um, but, you know, being down two starters definitely hurts. Um, just because of like rotations and things that our kids were used to up until that point. But like you said, a lot of positives. We hit 10 threes. Um, I felt like it was up and down game. Uh, we won't get into too many specifics, but there's a couple possessions that stick out that really like change the momentum of the game that officials kind of went against us. Um, and, you know, after rewatching the game, a lot of times I feel like maybe I'm just caught up in my emotions. But after rewatching, I think uh, I think we had every right to be upset with some of the calls that didn't go our way. Well, Mackenzie King's a senior. Uh, we've seen her have big games before she scores a season at 16. But the one that stands out to me, and maybe this is a, a positive we can take forward, Hester hits three three-pointers, a season high nine points. Talk about that a little bit and maybe if she's earned herself a little bit more playing time. Yeah, Josie has been playing extremely hard in practice every single day. And, you know, that's what we've tried to get her to buy into. You know, the speed of the game coming from, you know, the high school that she attended is totally different. Um, but, you know, she led the entire state of North Carolina in scoring. So we know what she's capable of doing. But she just had to kind of catch up to the speed of the game. But Josie is one of the most pure shooters I've ever been around. Um, so I feel like she's kind of like finding her place within our rotation, within our um, motion concepts and things like that. So she's definitely going to uh, get some more minutes coming, you know, into the second semester because she proved that she can come out uh, and knock down shots. But more importantly, I thought she was really big on the boards for us. You know, she's a bigger guard um, compared to some of the other players on the roster. So she came in. Um, got some big boards against Lincoln Memorial and, you know, defense has been a priority for her to improve on. So if we can kind of continue in the going in the right direction where she's been heading, I think I think she'll be able to come in and contribute a lot for us. Uh, Catawba is a team that you weren't able to play last year due to COVID-19. Every time we were supposed to play them, uh, COVID reared its ugly head. They're the best defensive team in the league, at least on paper, fortune around 24 turnovers a game. Cold opponents, uh, 55 points a game. Your impression of the Indians? I mean, they're tough. Um, they're gritty. They're going to run and jump, trap all over the court, full court, half court. Um, you know, they're just firing on all cylinders on the defensive end. So, you know, we've put in a couple of things to try to alleviate some of that pressure um, with a press offense. Um, but I think if we just have the right players in the right position, uh, handling the ball. I think we'll be okay. We're going to turn the ball over. I mean, that's what they do. Um, but we just have to prevent them from going on big scoring runs because, you know, looking at box scores, watching film, when they put together really big runs, it's almost impossible to overcome that just because of the intensity that they have on the defensive end. So we have to limit their runs. Right now, UVA-wise is in a break. First semester's over. Um, I think it's, it's helped your team. You spoke a little bit the last time we played about you know, having everybody at shoot rounds and things like that. Before we get into that a little bit more, I'll let you talk a little bit about um, the performance that these kids did in the classroom. I think we had seven kids on the Dean's list. Yeah, we did. And, you know, that's what, you know, we kind of state when we recruit players into our program that, you know, their family is always going to come first and then, and then academics will come second. So, you know, I feel like within our program, we have implemented like mandatory study hall hours for players with specific GPAs and we even have like players who have you know three eight three nine GPAs who come in and want that accountability with study hall so you know we make that a priority um, you know we do uh, class checks just to make sure our kids are on top of things our kids utilize the writing center tutoring services and all of that because you know with the strenuous schedule that they have being full-time students 
along with basketball, it's a lot on their plate. So we just try to encourage them to use their resources. But, you know, they, they've dialed in. And like you said, we had seven um, make Dean's list, which is, you know, a very good percentage of our team. So, you know, we as coaches are very proud of them. Um, you know, we're happy with, with our kids off the court just as much as we are on the court. All right, well, with class being out, how does that impact travel time, how you guys are heading down to Salisbury and uh, maybe get things a little bit uh, more normalized there and can have a more concentrated effort going into this contest? Yeah, so we're getting ready to have practice, um, hopefully be on the ro road by noon. That way we can get down there, get settled in, um, have a nice dinner. You know, we're not eating dinner 8, 9 o'clock at night and then getting in bed, you know, 11, 11.30, having to turn around and wake up early the next morning. So I think it's going to allow us extra rest, um, just kind of like be able to kick our feet up, get into our normal routine that, may, we, that we may typically do when we're at home. So, um, you know, that's the plan, um, but we'll have our hands full. You know, we, uh, we were able to knock them off when they were ranked the last time we played them. So I think our kids will you know, hopefully be just as excited as we were the last time we played them. Keys to victory against the Indians? Uh, definitely try not to turn the ball over. Um, and like I said earlier, we've got to prevent their big runs. And I think if we can score a majority of our points, around 70% of our points in the paint and not fall into, you know, their style of play where they want to rush shots, you know, force you to take those outside shots, I think we'll, we'll be able to put up more than 55 points a game. Tip off, 2 p.m. from Salisbury, North Carolina. You can listen live locally on FM 92.5 or online at WLSDRadio.com. Coach, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and we'll catch you up uh, in 2022. Sounds good. Thank you.